Okay, folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. What I'm going to do first today, before I go to the charts, I'm going to revise my 2016 The Year Ahead forecast. I published that back in December, early January, very early January. I mentioned at that point in time we'd see a rally in gold, the precious metal names. We got it. I also mentioned that we'd see a rally in the emerging markets. We got it. So where do we stand now, now that we're in the fourth month of 2016? I think that what we are at right now is a precipice, one that I have never seen before. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised tomorrow to wake up and see the Dow futures down 500 points or see his breakouts to new all-time highs. So let's do a pulse check of where we are at from a very, very high level view in this economy. And then we're going to segue into the charts. And how do the charts look longer term? So let's begin with economic data that's been released of late. Industrial production, horrible, simply horrible. It's very, very hard to argue that we are not in a recession in the manufacturing sector. And when you take a look at the real gross domestic product published by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, you could see that ever since early 1985, we have seen GDP in this country in a downtrend. Each peak is met with a lower high. And the problem is, is that we continue to break down to new lower lows. So the trend in GDP is very, very weak. And this is why the Federal Reserve will not raise rates in 2016. So my opinion about the Federal Reserve hasn't really changed much. Perhaps we'll get a token December increase, but I think that it's a long shot. Just think about what happened to the markets when we had that one quarter percentage point increase last December. We went into free fall. So there is not going to be, in my opinion, another rate hike in 2016 because of this graph. The market simply can't handle it. Next chart up is reported earnings versus profit per share. Let's go through what this chart means. In orange, you have corporate profits per share. And you can see that the trend is now obviously down. We put in a double top and we are moving lower. And if you just isolate out this orange line chart here, forget everything else with the exception of this mountain chart in green, which represents the S&P 500. And you can see that in the past when you saw a dip in earnings in orange, reported earnings, you saw a dip in the stock market, not just a dip, a huge corrections in the stock market. And you can see back in, let's call it 1997, the markets really didn't react to earnings dropping off. It took a while. That was the dot-com bubble. The markets just continued to move right through the stratosphere. And it was as earnings were beginning to trough, bottom out, that the markets just completely tanked. And I think that that's what we're seeing right now. You can see that earnings per share dropping off of a cliff. The Q1 earnings report expected to be about the same. And the markets are not responding to the decline in earnings. So we are continuing to press the upper bands of this trading range, threatening to break out with earnings dropping off of a cliff. That is not a good sign. And unlike the anomaly that was the dot-com bubble, the internet age, which, yes, along with interest rates being at historic lows at that point in time, you have now simply a market that's driven by the Federal Reserve and they're now unheard of low historical interest rates. And now they're threatening to take them even lower than last December. This chart here is quarterly earnings on a quarterly basis. And you can see that we're early on in the quarter, but we are already showing signs of weakness in, in Q1 earnings. So the trend is down. The market moving higher. Not good. So let's now talk about the markets, and then I'm going to talk about the end game for the markets. Right now, the this is a monthly chart of the Dow Jones. 
we have broken out above the upper band of resistance. While I was very bearish on the markets in December and January, right now I am neutral on the markets. And if we close out the month above this upper band of resistance, I think that the market moves higher and we will probably make new all-time highs. But I think that this parabolic move higher that we will see, if in fact we do close above this resistance level, will not last and it will eventually lead to a breakdown in the market, the likes that we have never seen before. And we will be looking to short the market aggressively once my charts start flashing the fact that the markets are beginning to weaken and begin to roll over. Now, what's going to be the end game? Before I leave this chart, no money flow overlaid here in black line chart. Double bottom setup, we broke out as well. Keep an eye on this chart, monthly chart. If we close out April above this upper band of resistance, expect higher highs, new all-time highs on the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. So what's the end game? This chart here is the Pring Inflation Index. And what this measures is inflation, and where you see it earliest is in the mining sector. And it's hard to argue that the mining sector, which was absolutely despised in 2015, 2014, 2013, is now in a new bull market. We broke out above the upper band of resistance on inflation. Now think about it. The Federal Reserve wants you to believe that there's no inflation out there. But here you have it. The charts don't lie. We have a breakout above the upper band of resistance. I am expecting to see a pullback on this index and a retest of the breakout point. During that time frame, that might be the period where we see the big rally in the markets. And then once we retest, we'll be looking to open up a short position, a large short position in the markets across the board. Now, why does this chart really matter? It's, it's because if the Federal Reserve allows inflation to rise unchecked, meaning they do not raise rates for fear that the stock market will collapse in a presidential election year, and I have no doubt that is a big reason why they will try to do everything possible to keep this market aloft because Janet Yellen wants to keep her job. She knows that it's all over if a Republican gets into office. So she will do everything to get Hillary or Bernie elected. So she will ignore inflation and keep interest rates lower so that the markets do not correct. But the problem is this. The game of musical chairs will soon then end. Once you have inflation running rampant, you have the U.S. dollar in correction mode, big correction mode. It's already down for the year and is threatening to get even weaker. Members, I'm going to go over the U.S. dollar on the week ahead commentary. The problem with the scenario of the Federal Reserve ignoring the rise in inflation and allowing the dollar to correct is that the only resolution to that problem is for a rapid increase in interest rates. And that reaction to a declining U.S. dollar is going to cause the U.S. stock market to go into free fall. That will be the end game for this market. But I don't believe it's time right now to be as short of the stock market as we were at the beginning of the year. Now, I think it's just time to enjoy the ride higher. We will be readjusting our portfolios to reflect that strategy. So let's go on to best stock charts. All right, first stock up is Amco Pittsburgh Corp, AP the symbol. Beautiful chart, but I think that this rally is nearing a close. We have RSI on a daily basis at 87.92. Friday, we saw a bullish key reversal, closed off the lows of the day, and closed near the highs of the day. Bullish stuff. So I don't believe that on Monday morning that you should be running in and trying to short this name just yet. I think that it's probably going to head higher. Volume is still well above average. I'd like to see those volume bars come down a bit. Let's take a look at a weekly chart to see where there is historic resistance. And in fact, we hit it last week at what was the high of the week? 
1847, and we backed off of that resistance level. So we may trade within this range early next week. If we break out and above this resistance level at 1850, I think we can go as high as 1957 per share. So again, I wouldn't go shorting AP on Monday. And we'll be looking at the intraday charts to identify divergences that are implying that the uptrend is weakening. And I will send out an alert to members as I would on all of these charts that I'm reviewing today. DSCO, Discovery Laboratories weekly chart. We'll start off with the weekly. We have a double bottom setup, a breakout above the secondary downtrend line. We closed out last week above the primary downtrend line. A beautiful chart. The downtrend is over. What we're betting on here is that DSCO is going to pull back and retest this breakout point at, let's call it, $3 per share. And that would be a healthy thing. It's going to pull back, retest the breakout point, see whether or not this prior resistance level will now act as support or will it fail. Daily chart. Daily chart, we have RSI at 88.20, extremely overbought. Stokes still look he healthy. It looks like it wants to move higher. Ideally, I like to see the shares trade up at $4.50. Then we'll look to open up a short position. Volume still very high. So another one that's just on our watch list. I wouldn't go reacting to the price action on Monday. I think that we are probably going to move higher. And that's a good thing because the higher it goes, the more the shorts get squeezed now, the greater our opportunity is to profit on the trade with less risk next chart up rpm international daily chart this is one that i think is closer to the end than the other two i just went over rpm at current has 85 on rsi which is overbought yes and below the rsi on the two prior charts however take note of where we're trading we were in a pennant formation we are now going parabolic we broke out above the upper band of resistance, pulled back, retested it not once but twice. Can this stock continue to move higher? Sure it can. But note volume. Volume is dropping off. On Friday, we saw the first below average down volume bar since the 8th of April. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. You can see that we are now at all-time highs on RPM. So this is what I call clear blue skies. And it makes it a little bit more difficult to short. Why is that? And what is clear blue skies? Clear blue skies means that there is no overhead supply. Unlike back here, when you had to worry about sellers coming in at the 47.22 level, which marked the prior high, or the prior high before that was $50.06. You had to worry about overhead supply at that level. You don't have that now. So what I think is going to happen is that we could press higher, but I think that next week we're going to flash a bearish key reversal. That'll be the opportunity to get short. And I think that we'll pull back down, retest this breakout point once again at the $50 per share level. Where do we close? 50.76. So I would like to see the stock move higher so that we have more profit to grab when we eventually do get that reversal bar and the pullback. So RPM, we're looking at as a short. Platinum Metals Group. We went into the year very long of platinum metals group we were buying down here on these consolidation bars we enjoyed the rally up to here the stock pulled back went on to make new yearly highs but failed to hold this breakout point this bull flag formation failed we have since pulled back we're retesting two dollars and sixty cents i went over this on best stock charts a couple of weeks ago that i expected to see a retest of two dollars and sixty cents i think that it's interesting from a long perspective but i'm concerned about a rally in the u.s dollar members will be going over the chart of the dollar on the week ahead forecast if we get that rally it's going to weigh on gold gold mining names and platinum but platinum is proven to have less of a correlation with the u.s dollar than does gold so we'll look to see whether or not this daily chart consolidates and when you take a look at the weekly chart, this is not a pretty weekly chart. We need to hold 
$2.50, $2.40, or else we're just going to wipe it off our watch list for now because that would mark a serious breakdown. We'll be heading down to $2.17 per share if we break down and close below $2.40. So the weekly chart is not looking good. We really need to see a gap higher on PLG this week, and we need to see a hold, no new weekly low, a hold of last week's lows. Smart technology, symbol SMT, daily chart. We were in a pennant formation last week, last Friday. We broke out above the upper band of resistance. What I like about this chart a lot is that we have a cup with handle formation, meaning a long bottoming process. We rallied up and through resistance. We went into a consolidation range, and they tried to take it down on Friday, failed. Buyers were below, bid it back up, and they broke it out above resistance. We have a pivot point at 48 cents per share. That's our price target. We're looking for a breakout above 48 cents per share. We'll look to get long of smart technologies. Weekly chart looking good. We broke out above this upper band of resistance. Bullish key reversal last week. I think we had higher on SMT. We we'll may be long. NUGT, we were long of NUGT from back here. When nobody else wanted it, I went into 2016 saying you need to own gold, you need to own the gold miners, you need to own silver. We made a massive profit in NUGT this year, not once, but multiple times. Last Monday, we exited our trade on this breakout. We booked profits, and the stock retraced the entire week's move, but on Friday, it flashed a bullish key reversal. It closed above resistance, so NUGT is looking good from a long perspective. Again, I keep mentioning this. I am worried about the dollar rallying, though, so that's the only issue that I see right now that could derail the NUGT trade or the gold trade. I like NUGT. We may be long as soon as next week again. Weekly chart, you could see that we pulled back last week after gapping higher, pulled back, retested the breakout point, bullish stuff. Last week's rally came on rising up volume, well above average. Institutions are buying here, folks. Goldman Sachs was so wrong on their call of gold, it's criminal. To say to short gold when you should have been buying it, absolutely criminal in my own opinion. Twitter, daily chart. We're looking at Twitter as a long, we book profits in this trade we were long of it back here on the breakout point. Nobody else wanted it. It rallied. We booked profits here. It's pulled back, now beginning to break out once again. But I don't think the story is on the daily chart. The story is on the weekly chart. Take note of last week's price action. Bullish key reversal. We closed above resistance at 1750. Let's update this chart. Now, on a weekly basis, RSI, we put in a higher low, and we broke out last week, confirming the breakout above the upper band of resistance on price. Volume is a bit light, so that's a concern, but the breakout cannot be ignored. Now, I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. I'm not sure when they report earnings. I generally do not like to buy stocks, perhaps options, but not stocks into earnings. I don't play that game. Too much risk, not enough reward. So Twitter is looking good as a buy. DWTI, this puts you short of crude oil. I went over this last Wednesday. It's posted on my blog on best stock charts. The performance of DWTI, I mentioned at that point in time that it was at resistance. I can't buy it into resistance. It had to close above this resistance level on Friday. It did so. Now, you have a meeting in Doha that did not go well for bulls who believe that the price of oil is moving higher. The meeting was not good. I believe the Iranians didn't even show up. So it appears as though they will continue to pump oil. So DWTI, we may see a pullback and a retest of this support level at 117.34. If it holds, it's a buy. We'll be looking to buy DWTI. On a weekly basis, this is what I really like about it. It's we've 
retraced 100% of the rally since November. It held a support level last week. I'm liking DWTI. I think that oil is probably going to move lower. We may see some additional consolidation here, but that's fine. Now, if the price of oil does drop, you need to keep an eye on the junk bond market. This is the JNK, the Spiders Barclays High Yield Bond ETF. Keep an eye on it. It's been pulling back of late. It was overbought. We are bull flagging out right now, and you would expect to see a continuation breakout. Now, if oil goes into a free fall, I wouldn't expect a breakout in the junk bond market. So while this chart is looking bullish, beware, be very, very cautious of the junk bond market. And if the junk bond market begins to resume its free fall, that could send the stock market rolling over very, very soon. So keep an eye on the junk bond market. Now, members, let's roll right into Market Pulse Check, where we review the health of the overall markets. And then we're going to roll into our holdings and strategy for the coming week. Okay, members, let's um, let's talk about the VIX. This is a weekly chart. Uh, you can see that for the past several weeks, we have had a tremendous amount of resistance up at the, let's call it 1670 level. We remain in a weekly downtrend. We have a lower band of a rising support level, which began back in June of 14, which is holding. Now, if we break down below 13, you should expect to see a breakdown and a retest of this extreme lower band of support last seen back in August of 15. Now, why does it matter if we retest this support level? It matters because 